Welcome back to the last hour of our event. It's my privilege now to introduce our closing keynote speaker, Janet Mills, the governor of Maine. Janet Trafton Mills was sworn in as the 75th governor of Maine on January 2nd, 2019. She's the first woman governor in the state's history. As governor, she's fighting to see that every Maine person has affordable, high quality healthcare. Maine is actually the most rural state in the country. And Governor Mills is a national leader for the health of rural people. Thank you, David. This is Governor Janet Mills from the great state of Maine. And I'm honored to join LeapFrog's annual meeting to address some of the nation's leading hospital systems, healthcare providers, and health policymakers, including your CEO, Leah Binder, who I remember got her start up in Franklin County, my home, my home turf. Well, it's been a long, long road, as one rock group once prominently put it. What a long, strange trip it's been. 20 long months of a pandemic, 85 or so executive orders, 21 proclamations, more than 80 White House calls. Every day I think, is this why I ran for governor? Let's be honest, nobody, but nobody runs for governor thinking, well, one day I'll be the person who gets to shut down weddings and funerals and graduations and 4th of July parades and Labor Day picnics and, oh, and closes the bars. Nobody, but nobody wants to be that person. But over the last 20 months, I've learned an awful lot about our healthcare system here in Maine. And they have been such great partners, cutting through any regional rivalries and providing the highest quality healthcare during the most challenging times we've ever had in recent history. I'm grateful for your work as well on hospital and healthcare safety, a goal I share as governor. After all, my responsibility as defined in the Constitution of Maine is to provide for the welfare of our people. That means their health. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete mental, social, and physical well being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity, end quote. So for 20 months, our mental, social, physical well being has been tested by the presence of a de devastating virus. No one has been tested more than our healthcare workers who put their own health on the line to save lives. At the beginning of this pandemic, Maine knew that we were uniquely vulnerable to the coronavirus disease. We have the oldest and one of the most dispersed populations in the whole country. Reaching Maine people in the furthest corners of the far flung communities across Maine and to tell them to watch their distance and wash their hands and wear masks and provide personal protective equipment and testing supplies and eventually administer vaccines, that was always going to be a big challenge. On March 2nd, 2020, before the very first case of COVID-19 was reported in Maine, I convened our coronavirus response team. Their main goal, of course, was to save lives. The premise of their work, however, was to follow the science to analyze data objectively, and to tell the truth wherever it may lead. Keeping the people of Maine informed and operating under an umbrella of transparency was so important to maintaining the trust of the citizens of our state. And working closely with our major healthcare systems, true allies in public health, was of paramount importance to an effective response to this unpredictable and deadly virus. Our response team, working with those healthcare systems, hosted webinars for clinicians, infection control staff, and other healthcare professionals, including public health nurses. They distributed personal protective equipment for healthcare workers and first responders. They developed a contact tracing protocol and other COVID-19 mitigation methods to identify, investigate, and isolate new cases. And they built an accessible and accurate reporting system to keep the public informed about cases. That close partnership between the state of Maine and our healthcare systems has continued throughout the pandemic, and they've done it in four specific ways. One, personal protective equipment. Two, staffing. Three, capacity. And four, financial support. First, PPE and testing. Early on, we had a limited supply of PPE. 
as we beg the federal government to expedite, expedite the release of PPE from the strategic national stockpile, we work to procure other sources of PPE from Maine healthcare providers. The University of Maine, for instance, produced over 630 gallons of hand sanitizer for more than 30 hospitals and residents of the Department of Corrections produced over 1,000 cloth face coverings and 200 gowns for healthcare workers. The private sector did its part too. Innovative main companies like IDEX, Jackson Labs, Puritan and Abbott Labs shifted to produce new testing materials for COVID-19 at a time when test kits were so very scarce. Other companies like a barbecue manufacturing company, Main Source Machining, switched to manufacturing ballot drop boxes during the election last year boxes that were designed by our community college faculty, and that helped us conduct a safe and robust election a year ago, November. Breweries and distilleries like Maine Craft Distilling shifted to producing hand sanitizer. Prominent outdoor gear retailer L.L. Bean and Flowfold, a wallet maker, made face masks and face shields. Lee Automobile Company produced public service ads about public health precautions and Bangor Savings Bank paid for internet devices for children to attend school online. That's Maine people working together. Using federal funds, we expanded laboratory capacity in rural hospitals and stood up testing sites far and wide to ensure that patients could access safe care everywhere in our state. So secondly, staffing. The healthcare sector is one of Maine's largest employers, providing good paying jobs for thousands of people. Yet for a long time, here as in other parts of the country, healthcare facilities have grappled with a serious labor shortage. The pandemic, of course, has only made things worse. At the start of my administration, we re-enrolled and refilled public health nursing positions that had been previously diminished. We then put out a call to retired healthcare workers through our main response program, our network. More than 300 volunteers answered the call. We mobilized the Maine National Guard to relieve healthcare workers of some jobs and letting them, letting them focus on other work. Well, these short-term steps helped, but our healthcare workforce uh, remains challenged. To make healthcare careers more affordable and more accessible, more attractive, my administration has allocated more than $14 million in federal funds for scholarships and student loan repayments for doctors, nurses, behavioral health specialists, long-term care professionals, and other healthcare professionals. Among other activities, that funding will expand rural graduate med medical education, paid training opportunities, and broader healthcare career categories, such as community paramedics, and community health workers. Thirdly, capacity. The Maine Department of Health and Human Services has provided public health nurses and medical volunteers to assist with monoclonal antibody treatments to keep COVID-19 patients, most of whom are unvaccinated, out of our intensive care units. We've provided regulatory flexibility to let smaller hospitals care for COVID patients in place and relieve the burden on Maine's larger systems. And we've worked closely with hospitals, including those in rural Maine, to use inpatient capacity to its fullest, fullest rather than create alternative care sites in auditoriums and non-healthcare settings. Fourth, financial support. Just last week, the federal government approved our plan to provide $126 million in Maine care funds through the American Rescue Plan for bonuses to home and community-based direct support workers and to shared living providers. Those funds are on top of an increase in main care base rates, which set a base compensation for direct care workers at 125% of state minimum wage. These federal funds are also on top of our general fund budget, which includes an additional $123 million for nursing facilities and residential care facilities and adult family care homes, and $23 million for hospitals. That doesn't include an additional $25 million in coronavirus relief funds that we already awarded to healthcare organizations to help them recover from the pandemic. 
This funding is providing critical resources to recruit and retain talented healthcare professionals in the state of Maine. As hospitals work to hire new staff, we're also helping, helping them keep their staff healthy. I required healthcare workers in Maine to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 by the end of October. I issued that requirement for three reasons, to protect the health of our healthcare workers, to protect their patients, and to protect our healthcare capacity. Our healthcare providers, including Maine Hospital Association, <clears throat> Maine, Maine Medical Association, Maine Primary Care, and Maine Healthcare Association, I mean, along with our two largest health systems, Maine Health and Northern Light, were partners in this move. I'm pleased to say that as of the end of October, nearly 97% of nursing home workers are vaccinated. Nearly 97% of assisted housing facility workers were vaccinated and more than 98% of hospital staff were vaccinated. Our state is grappling with a surge in COVID-19 hospitalizations driven by the Delta variant. And there's no question our hospital capacity is stressed, but I cannot imagine how much more difficult our situation would have been with more healthcare staff out of work due to COVID-19 as they were before, and with more people getting the virus from being in a healthcare setting. We're also working with our hospital systems to administer vaccines, of course, including the newly eligible children ages five to 11 and boosters for all adults, regardless of age or circumstance. In Maine, nearly 200,000 people or 20.7% of fully vaccinated people have received a booster dose so far. And just over 27,000 children ages five to seven or more than 20% of that population have received their first dose of COVID-19 vaccine. And by making a concerted effort to involve organizations associated with immigrant and racial and ethnic minority communities, we have eliminated case disparities and achieved an extraordinarily high rate of vaccination among those populations. Maine has the third highest rate of fully vaccinated residents with nearly 72% fully vaccinated against COVID-19, according to the US CDC. Well, we have work to do, but that nation leading vaccine progress would not have been possible without Maine's close partnership with our healthcare providers. The coming winter months will be difficult, but we will keep working closely with those healthcare providers as we have since the beginning of the pandemic to defeat this disease and support and restore the mental, social, and physical well-being of all Maine people. So thank you, LeapFrog, for having me here today. And thank you for what you do to boost healthcare providers, those who work every day, to give the people of Maine and the country the safest and highest quality healthcare system in the world. Well, no one wants to be the governor who governs during a terrible pandemic, pandemic you know, the bearer of bad news day after day, I could not have had a better staff, a better cabinet, or better partners in the healthcare sector than people like Tim Dentry and Jim Jarvis and Andy Mueller, Mueller and his staff at Maine's largest healthcare systems. It's only by virtue of their dedication and collaboration that we've been able to save as many lives as we have. Thank you for having me today. Thank you, Governor Mills. That was inspiring as we expected. And uh, as a Maine native myself, I am, of course, doubly proud to hear of the many accomplishments of the state and, and your leadership um, during this terrible pandemic that we're all, in, we're all enduring. Uh, one of the things that I love about your story of Maine's experience of the pandemic is how people work together. You know, I, I spent lots of time in Maine and you kind of make do in Maine, and you, but everybody works together. You do barn buildings. You really do come together to build things together. And, uh, and I love the story of the business community coming, LL Bean making masks. And, you know, it's just really exciting to hear that, that the spirit of Maine people coming together to make a difference is still there. And it's also something I think is special about Maine because until very recently, I didn't know that Maine is considered the number one most rural state in the country. And so that ability to come together and bring all the resources to the troubled spot, uh, which is really a, um, a rural ethic. I mean, it's how rural people survive sometimes is they all come together when they need to. Um, and Maine itself now is an embodiment of that. And I think a showcase for 
many of the best approaches we've seen on the pandemic. So again, I congratulate you and thank you for your inspiration for all of us uh, at LeapFrog. Thanks, Leah. So now I promised everyone at this meeting that we are going to end today's meeting with uh, a special award. And that award is going to honor patient safety and uh, so here's what we are, here's how we came about doing this award. Um, we've had, as I'm sure everyone who's attending knows, we've had the LeapFrog Hospital Safety Grade uh, since 2012. So almost 10 years now, we've had, we've been issuing letter grades, A, B, C, D, or F grades for every general hospital in the United States. And we update that grade every six months. So we call those rounds. So we've had 20 rounds now of updates to the LeapFrog Hospital Safety Grade. And like, like an ordinary college or high school, we grade on a curve. So only those hospitals that significantly exceed the performance of their peers uh, can get an A or a B. They have to do better than everyone else. And I'm pleased to say that over time, we've seen hospitals get better at patient safety indicators. And we look at a wide range of them. We look at almost 29 uh, different indicators of safety, whether it's infections or errors, accidents. And we are seeing improvements. And, but that means that in order to get an A, you have to do better because you have to do better than your peers to earn that A. So when we reflected on the hospital safety grade and we looked at our own data to see what is happening, there was really one thing that stood out almost more than anything else. And that is that one state in the country consistently demonstrates a commitment to safety that has resulted in the majority, the vast majority of hospitals there earning an A round after round after round. Only one state has achieved top uh, top status and number one in the country status for percentage of hospitals with an A for nine rounds of the hospital safety grade. And uh, this one state has been in the top five among states for 16 rounds, almost all rounds. And this state has been always in the top 10. So mm -hmm. this is a state where we see not only uh, that the hospitals care about safety, which is extremely important and are achieving in safety, which is also extremely even more important, but that the state itself has fostered a culture where the hospitals are expected to do better. They must support each other to do better because you just don't have a track record like that without, without having an outstanding commitment to the safety and protection of every patient in every hospital in state of this state. And guess what this state is? Well, we're very pleased to present the top state of the decade for patient safety award from the LeapFrog Group to <clears throat> the state of Maine. Yay. <laughs> and by happenstance, we happen to have the leader, the governor of the state of Maine with us uh, to accept this award. Uh, governor, uh, I think we, we, we have to do it virtually, you know, uh -huh. you know well. But, you can hold up, that's the statue. I'm virtually presenting it to you. Thank you, Leah. Uh, I am pleased and privileged to accept this on behalf of the 1.3 million people of the state of Maine and the tens of thousands of dedicated healthcare workers and administrators in our healthcare systems who have achieved excellence during some of the hardest times in our state's history. Uh, so on their behalf, I. I gladly accept this award. Thank you so much. Well, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to do this uh, to the state of Maine and all the hospitals. And you're right, the workers. This has been a, a, a very, very hard time when we have relied on the courage of our workers and, and workforce and healthcare more than ever before. So it is a, a, a special honor to be able to present this award to all of our colleagues in the state. So congratulations to you. I wish this with all of them. Thank you again. It's awfully good to see you, Leah. Good to Thank see you everyone. too. Thank you so much. Stay warm. Thank you, Governor.
And we'd now like to share a few words of congratulations from colleagues in the state of Maine who also deserve honor for this award. I'm delighted to congratulate the state of Maine for being recognized by the LeapFrog Group as the top state of the decade for patient safety. This prestigious award demonstrates Maine's commitment to compassionate and expert health care for our people. This honor comes at a time when hospitals and health care workers have been stretched to the limit due to the pandemic. I'm happy that their hard work is being recognized. Since the first LeapFrog Hospital Safety Grades were published in 2012, Maine has been a top-ranked state more times than any other state. Maine is a rural state, as we well know, which makes this achievement especially significant. This recognition by the LeapFrog Group confirms what the people of our state have long known. The clinicians and staff of our hospitals are dedicated to the well-being of the patients and families they serve. Thank you, congratulations, and keep up your great work. Hi, I'm Congresswoman Shelley Pingree. I'm always proud to be a Mainer, but today I'm especially proud. Year after year, our hospital set the standard for safety. In fact, Maine has been a top-ranked state more times than any other state since LeapFrog started grading hospitals in 2012. And despite the havoc wrecked on our healthcare systems throughout the pandemic, 2020 and 2021 were no different. Yes, it was, and it continues to be immensely dangerous and hard work. Everyone on the front line are heroes, and we owe them our endless gratitude. Through all of the challenges, they persevered and always put the safety of their patients first. I can't tell you how reassuring it is to know that Mainers are getting the best possible care while enduring this health crisis. Even when we're not in the midst of a global pandemic, Maine faces challenges by being the most rural state in the country. This award highlights our efforts to ensure all have access to safe and high quality care, no matter where they live. Supporting rural Maine is a top priority of mine that I continue to advocate for through my role in the House Appropriations Committee and supporting landmark legislation like Build Back Better. Thanks to the leadership of Governor Mills, Maine CDC Director Shaw, and the countless resilient healthcare workers Mainers can rest easier knowing that if they end up in the hospital, God forbid, they will be taken care of. Thank you. Wow. When I, when I saw Maine is the top state in the last decade for hospital safety from the LeapFrog organization, I, I was just overwhelmed. That's, uh, that's an unbelievable uh, recognition uh, and honor to our state. I say recognition very deliberately because it's a recognition of thousands and millions of individual decisions and actions on on the part of Maine healthcare workers, uh, the frontline workers who take care to wash their hands, who take care to uh, see that the that the safety protocols and provisions in the hospitals are observed. Uh, hospitals can be dangerous places uh, by definition. There are sick people there. And of course, in the time of the pandemic, uh, there can be sick people who are contagious. So uh, hospital safety is more important than ever. And to have had this recognition from LeapFrog, which is uh, an incredible national organization uh, that does just wonderful work, is, uh, is just fantastic for Maine. Uh, it's a reassurance to Maine people. Uh, but it's also, as I say, I think the most important thing to me is that it, it recognizes uh, the efforts and the work and the dedication of thousands of healthcare workers in Maine who have made our hospitals the safest in the country. Nobody else can say that. That is uh, something that is an incredible accomplishment. So thank you to LeapFrog and thank you to LeapFrog for all the work you do in generally the, the transparency of of, uh, of, the, of our 
medical system and, and uh, the recognition that you're providing uh, to the state of Maine. Uh, thank you to LeapFrog, but thank you to our providers, for, to our hospitals, to all of those who contributed to making this honor possible. On behalf of the people of Maine, congratulations and thanks. Hi, I'm here with Steve Littleson. He is the president and CEO of Central Maine Healthcare. Congratulations to your state and to you for being such a strong part of that with your wonderful hospitals. Thank you, Leah. We're very proud of, uh, of this recognition and the work that our team members have been doing for many years. Well, it's been a tough uh, couple of years, especially with the pandemic. I know that uh, everybody has had to rely on really the courage of our workforce. So I'm sure it's a particularly nice year for us to be able to honor the state of Maine for, for its workforce and the healthcare workforce and what you've done for patient safety. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Courage is, uh, is, a, is a good word. Uh, and I would add to it commitment. Uh, you know, our, our team members uh, ha have really uh, hung in there and uh, have remained focused on what's most important during, you know, very challenging times. Uh, and, and they know that first and foremost, uh, keeping each other and our patients safe is, is of top priority. And, and this, uh, this recognition by LeapFrog, I think, is a testament to their attention to that detail. So tell, tell me a little bit about what Central Maine Healthcare has done to create this strong record around patient safety. Well, I think it's really being focused on the very basics. Um, uh, despite all the distractions and, and challenges, uh, you know, we, we've never let up on the importance of hand washing, for example. Um, and despite many other challenges, uh, including the workforce shortage, you know, those basic tools, those basic systems and processes that really lead to the, you know, best results and the safest care have been top of mind uh, always at, at Central Maine Healthcare. And, and, and we've seen really positive results. Our infection rates ha have dropped precipitously since we were first recognized uh, with, um, with the LeapFrog A score back in, I think, 2017, 2018. So it's been a number of years of really focusing on, you know, the, even the, the smallest but most important details that really keep our patients safe. You're fairly new to the state of Maine, so welcome. Thank you. Have you noticed anything about the state that would lead you to believe that this recognition for patient safety is earned? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I've been in other states and other environments, and I think there are a lot of unique things about Maine, not, not, not the least of which is that, you know, people grow up here, they, they, they stay here, they work here, they live here, uh, and, and it's people caring for people. I mean, it's, it's our team members caring for their families, their, their friends, their neighbors, um, and, and I think the close-knit uh, approach to, to healthcare within our communities really uh, enables our team members to to stay focused on what's most important and and to know that you know people are really getting and receiving really safe and 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 high quality care. I think it's unique to Maine. Well, that's great to hear. And but I hope that you also believe that the rest of the country can create a patient safety that is that meets the standards of Maine as well. We all want, we want every hospital to be as safe as possible. Absolutely, and you know the, the 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 tools that we've employed and our colleagues across the state of Maine have employed over the years uh, to keep you know these these scores where they are and and this track record going. I mean, they're they're universal. They're they're they, they can be applied you know everywhere. And uh, hopefully, we're serving as a bit of an example to, to other you know states and other health systems and hospitals that. Uh, that if you focus on the right things, you know, good things happen and, and, and you know, and, and can be reassured that you're keeping patients safe. Great, well, thank you so much for Steve and congratulations uh, for your great work in your health system, but also for the, your state and being part of uh, a real uh, inspiration for the rest of the country. It is inspirational. We appreciate your uh, recognition and, and, and appreciation for the work that we're doing in Maine. Thank you. Thank you. I am here with Andy Muller, he's CEO of Maine Health, and we are just announcing to him 
that Maine is the recipient of the uh, top state of the decade award for LeapFrog. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much. Um, it is exciting to be in the state of Maine. Um, it's exciting to be at Maine Health. And I'm so excited for all of our care team members who really dedicated themselves to ensuring the quality and safety of the care we deliver to our patients. I'm especially proud of Dr. Omar Hassan, who helps lead that effort for us and all of his dedicated effort and energy over the last several years to ensure that Maine Health plays its part in making sure that we're delivering safe and highly effective and reliable care for the residents of the communities we serve. Governor Mills, when she accepted this award, really talked about how extraordinary the hospitals have been during COVID and how they work together with each other, but also with the business community. And you're fairly new to Maine and you're new to Maine Health. Have you noticed that? Yeah, without question. And, you know, it was part of what I began to understand in learning about the opportunity here at Maine Health was just how close knit the community really is around trying to do the right things for all the people we serve. And it was so important because our vision at Maine Health is working together so our communities are the healthiest in America. And that's a really ambitious goal. So I'm thrilled that as an organization, we've really embraced the notion that the together may be the most important word in that vision statement. And I think we recognize that to achieve such an ambitious goal, we've got to work together. And so I think all of us are very aligned around making sure that we're doing our parts to care for everyone in the community and doing it in a, in a safe and reliable manner. Well, as you know, I'm, I'm a born and raised in Maine. So it is particularly exciting for me to see Maine win this, win this award and also for my family cared for by Maine Health and all of your hospitals and all the hospitals in Maine, just knowing you're there, caring for us is really um, a powerful statement. What would you say to other hospitals in the country? Can they get where Maine is? Yeah, without question. It, it clearly takes a lot of energy and effort. Uh, Maine Health results in LeapFrog um, was one of the motivating factors in my interest in this opportunity. And it's been clear for me to see in my time here just how dedicated the team has been um, to really developing the processes and the tools necessary to be successful in ensuring that our patients are receiving safe care. But there's not a lot of magic to it. It really is about doing the hard work, about being honest with yourself about where you have opportunities and then taking action and learning continuously. And I think our team here at Maine Health has really embraced that. And I hope it's something that other health systems across the country continue to embrace as well. Wonderful. Well, congratulations. And you've made us all proud uh, in the state of Maine for your accomplishment in patient safety. And I agree. I'd like to see every hospital in the country and every state in the country achieve what, what you have achieved. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Hello, everyone. I am Peter Hayes. I'm CEO and President of the Health Purchaser Alliance of Maine, formerly the Maine Health Management Coalition. We have been a, we've been proud and honored to have been a regional leapfrog regional leader for over a decade now. And with that, I want to just kind of call out and congratulate the health systems of Maine and especially the rural hospitals of Maine. Um, that have demonstrated tremendous leadership and commitment to patient safety for the past decades. Uh, Maine has had the distinction and still does of being a top ranked state more times than any other state since 2012 for patient safety based on the LeapFrog hospital patient safety ratings. Um, the HPA has been proud and honored to have been part of that process and look forward to continue to partner with our health systems and hospitals and providers in Maine. Um, it really is a great example of it takes a village sometimes to achieve things. It really needs to be kind of a collaborative effort that has aligned incentives of various stakeholders that come together to, to kind of move the dial on anything. In this case, it really was an aligned incentives of public private purchasers. Um, but also other various stakeholder groups like hospitals, physicians, health plans and governmental entities. Um, it really demonstrates Maine kind of living up to our to our our motto, which is Duragogo, which is really it's Latin for I direct, 
but can be interpreted to I lead and Maine's proud to have really been on sort of the forefront of some of the things that are evolving around healthcare transformation and reform. And, you know, we've been part of that with others and, and really appreciate that. Um, and with that, I would really like to have a special call out and appreciation for all of those entities that have contributed to this accomplishment. It, it, it includes our organization, but also the state employee health commission, all the state employees and their health benefit plan, uh, main quality counts, and of course, hospitals in public and private purchasers. So congratulate all. It's a, it's a place of distinction and pride for Maine and glad everybody is here celebrating all of that. Thank you, everyone. Good evening. My name is Ralph Johnson, and I'm a proud member of the team here at LeapFrog. Before coming to LeapFrog, I spent 35 years working in Maine hospitals, and I want to say congratulations, Maine, for receiving the LeapFrog Top State of the Decade for Patient Safety Award. I spent 35 years on the leadership teams at Mid-Maine Medical Center, now Maine General, Maine Medical Center, Southern Maine Healthcare, Spring Harbor Hospital, and Franklin Memorial Hospital. I've also had the pleasure of collaborating with colleagues across the state from Northern Maine Medical Center in Fort Kent to the many Northern Light hospitals, as well as the Central Maine healthcare facilities. I know for a fact that patient safety is at the forefront of everything your hospitals do. Even though I now live in the Washington DC area, I still return to Maine for my healthcare needs. My wife and I have eight grandchildren in Maine and we are comforted to know that they have the safest care available to them if they ever need the services of a hospital. Congratulations, Maine, for receiving such a prestigious recognition. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph, and, and everyone from the state of Maine uh, for your kind words about LeapFrog, and, but most of all, congratulations on your excellence in the state of Maine. Um, we additionally have a statement from Northern Light Health, which is the other health system in, uh, in the state. And the statement says, we at Northern Light Health are incredibly proud to be included in such a wonderful recognition for the state of Maine. This award helps validate our common purpose and provides inspiration to continue our journey to provide the highest quality, safest care every day in support of our promise to make healthcare work for the people of Maine. Additionally, we offer a heartfelt congratulations to our healthcare colleagues throughout the state on an excellent achievement. So thank you all for, for these wonderful words and, uh, but most of all for this wonderful work because you truly are saving lives and not just in the state of Maine, uh, all the hospitals and health systems who participate in the LeapFrog journey in so many ways, your candor, your transparency, your excellence, our top hospitals, our A hospitals, our top ASCs, all of you make a huge difference and it is such a privilege. It's one of the great perks of my job to be able to honor all of you and to be able to recognize excellence when we see it too often. We just assume excellence is always gonna happen in healthcare, but unfortunately, that's not always the case. But more importantly, when it is the case, we should not just say excellence, it's just run of the mill stuff. Excellence means we save lives and we make lives better. And we, we really have to honor that. I think if we learned anything from the pandemic, it's that, how important our healthcare system and the people who work in it are to making a real difference in our own lives on the most personal of all levels. So you may notice that I have removed the blue background from my uh, image here on Zoom. So I'm giving you a little preview of our new offices, LeapFrog. In the middle of the pandemic, we moved. And we now have beautiful new offices uh, on 1775 K Street in Washington, which is, I like to say the White House is near us. <laughs> We're near the White House. Uh, but we, uh, we have a, a wonderful office space. So hopefully at some point we'll see you here and come here for a meeting or just uh, have some lunch with us. We have just a beautiful space. You also, I hope enjoyed, for some of you anyway, I hope you enjoyed our swag box of uh, treats and some notes from our sponsors and from us that we wanted you to be able to use at home uh, to enjoy the day with us. I wanna thank our board chair, David Goldhill, uh, and our whole board uh, for 
And I, I really want to shout out an enormous thanks to our incredible speakers today. I learned so much from every single one of them. Um, and most of all, I was really motivated today, and I hope you were too, by their passion. LeapFrog is not an organization that focuses on research. We benefit from research. We are consumers of research. We care deeply about research and evidence. But fundamentally, we're an organization that's about change. And what we heard from our speakers was that change can happen. Not only can it happen, it must happen. And it's important and it will change lives. It was just such an inspirational day for that reason. So I really do thank our speakers. Um, you really made a difference today and inspired us. We cannot, we cannot be complacent. There are, there's work to do. We have to save some lives. We have to save the maternal health panel really did remind me of how much is really at stake when we address health equity and when we address the quality and safety of care for every single person in this country. Our whole families, our futures are at stake, but we can do it. And that's the good news. So I also wanna offer a very big thank you to our team. And particularly, let me say, Suzanne Tyler at VMA Global Events and Ryan Rollins and the team at ICV Digital Media who made it possible for us to come to you through the, through the wonders of, of Zoom and did a beautiful job with it. Uh, and of course, I have to thank our legendary LeapFrog staff. They work so hard to make this day and every day full of possibilities. They are so creative and so passionate and dedicated. Uh, Angela Hopkins, Erica Mobley, Katie Edson, Elizabeth Harmon and Karen Jupiter in particular, I think for today's events, but the entire team comes together to make LeapFrog effective and to make it a reason for you to come and join us. You, an extraordinary audience, an extraordinary family really of LeapFrog supporters who make it possible for us to achieve what we achieve. Now, the good news is we will not always be virtual. Just we will not, we are going to someday move outside of the confines of this camera. Um, and we hope to do so on March 16th, 2022. So please mark your calendars. Uh, and we will be, we are announcing the LeapFrog Greenlight Gala. It will be about momentum for patient safety, green light, fast forward. Uh, we're gonna make it a black tie optional event, but you no, know, it's kind of fun to dress up. It's an opportunity for us to join together uh, and really grow LeapFrog. We've, we've made a difference already. We wanna grow even more, it, not because it's important for us to be big or small, because our mission is big and we have to accomplish it. So let's work together to do that. I hope you'll join me. And I hope you'll think about donating to us. You can do that even now if you'd like. We have a donation uh, button on this platform and we have a match, an anonymous matching donor who will match whatever you give today. So please think about giving us a, a, giving us a donation that will help to advance this mission, which we're all so dedicated to. Um, and it's also on our website if you want to donate. Um, if you missed any of today's sessions or you'd like to review them, starting tomorrow, you'll be able to view the recording. You'll log onto this platform or you can get a link from our website. Uh, you'll need your password that you use today in order to get the, uh, the full day's worth of events. Plus, each of the awards presentations will be posted on our website separately. So you'll have a chance to review them and to review it with your team as well if you'd like to share with them your, your great honor. Uh, we will also be posting links and studies and resources that were mentioned by various speakers during today's meeting. So keep an eye out for all of that. Plus, we will send it to you. Uh, just to remind you. And I also have to thank our sponsors who make it possible for us to do this uh, this year and every year. We are very grateful and very fortunate to be able to rely on these sponsors to make it possible for us to bring this conversation to you, engage the wider, broader public in the United States in important conversations that we've had, like the ones we've had today, and like ones we will have in the future. Our gold sponsors, I particularly thank uh, Cigna 
and Health Track RX uh, are extraordinary supporters of LeapFrog and have been advisors to LeapFrog as well. And, in, and we consider them very valuable partners in our future. Um, our silver sponsor is Gojo. Our bronze sponsors, Allscripts and Viacom CBS. Our LeapFrog champions, AARP, BioVigil, Echolab, HealthNet, Horizon, Medline, Merck, Audrey's Bernstein, and Rensair. And finally, our contributor sponsors, ERIC, Patient Safety Movement Foundation, and the Business Group on Health. All of these sponsors have made a real difference today and every day. We really rely on you and we thank you for being there for this mission. Now, before you leave the platform today, could you please take a moment to fill out our evaluation, which is on the virtual platform. We wish you a healthy and happy holiday season. Let's hope that we get together in person very soon. But in the meantime, we appreciate your being with us virtually because I think we did make a difference today and we plan to make a big difference next year. So thanks for being part of this quest for higher quality, safer healthcare for everyone. Thank you.